Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. The vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Same thing with iTunes. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk NBA first for hardcore fans. I need to have you look at a rookie because this guy is going to be a future all-star, right? His name's Alfred Payton. He plays for the Orlando Magic. This guy continues to show us that he is one of the stories coming out of last year's draft. Quite frankly, he's better than Orlando's pick last year, Victor Oladipo, who's injured right now. Uh, quite frankly, he's putting up better numbers than uh, Andrew Wiggins, and he's a point guard. 6-4, he gets assists. He already has several games with at least seven assists, right? At least three of them, right? He plays great defense. Quite frankly, he's a rookie of the year candidate, and right now, very few people know who he is, right? The time to make money is when there's a gap between public opinion or information and what's really going on, right? Take a look at Alfred Payton. Alfred spelled E-L-F-I-R-D, right? Let's also talk about a huge game that's happening today. I don't know who wins it. I'm going to stay away from it, but just understand, the Golden State Warriors right now with a new coach, Steve Kerr, are playing perhaps the league's best basketball. They're much better defensively than they were last year, right? Also understand, too, that with David Lee out, in other words, they're going to have more rebounding capability when he returns. Just understand that Andrew Bogut is a shot-blocking force in the paint, and you're simply not going to get better outside shooting than Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, right? So keep an eye on Golden State. They're going to be tested today on the road at Houston against the Houston Rockets. And let me just say, I'm surprised and how good the Rockets look. Trevor Ariza playing with James Harden and of course Dwight Howard. It's a revelation. Keep in mind too, they have hard-nosed other guys on that roster, right? People like Patrick Beverly. This is a team that can turn it up defensively. This is also a team with several three-point shooters to complement Dwight Howard on the inside. In other words, they have one of the league's premier inside outside games now the line for today's game right golden state the hottest team is visiting the houston rockets the line right now is houston minus one right it's practically a pick em game if you're going to watch one nba game today and you have the nba ticket that's the game to look at now let's talk about finally one story that really needs to be mentioned I was out scouting. I, um, you know, was looking at the Cleveland Cavaliers. There's so much hype. I personally don't even understand how they're so highly regarded. Because understand, here you have multiple cores of that team: LeBron James, right, Kevin Love, who've never played together, right. They're coming together on a team that doesn't really have a point guard, right. Kyrie Irving is a two, not a one. Right. Let me also point out, too, that you also have a problem of deference. Right. Kyrie Irving himself was the first player picked in the NBA draft. Right. Why would he suddenly decide that he's going to be a complimentary player? Doesn't that take a certain mindset that very few have? Right. You're not going to find a Chris Bosh on every team. Just because LeBron James shows up in town doesn't mean that other guys are suddenly going to say, hey, you know what, my A game, let me chuck it. Now I'm going to be a facilitator, right? Understand, if LeBron ever played with Kobe, do you think Kobe would suddenly become a point forward and would just pass the ball to LeBron and would be happy averaging 15 points a game? So I think it's a bit too much. To expect Kyrie Irving to suddenly become a pure passer. 
understand Lenny Wilkins, one of the best coaches in NBA history, had a philosophy. He said you can't take away from a guy the thing he enjoys the most because that that's what makes him. Right? I can't say to a score, hey, look, you know, stop shooting the basketball. Stop scoring. Because we have a better player, you're now going to have to subordinate your game. That's not the way it works. So I'm looking at the Cavaliers, and the pieces don't fit. Think about it, too. This team not only has new guys playing together for the first time, right? This team has a coach who's never been a head coach in the NBA. How could anyone think that this team's even going to win the Eastern Conference? I don't see it. I was looking at the team. They had no flow whatsoever. Right? It's a bunch of individual artists who are coming down the court. They're not that defensively gifted. Let's be real. Kevin Love's a rebounder. He's not a shot blocker. He doesn't have an Akeem Olajuwon presence in the paint. Let's get real for a second. He doesn't have, for the Milwaukee Bucks fans, watching this video, he doesn't have a Larry Sanders presence in the paint. What this team needs, quite frankly, is a Larry Sanders. Right? A guy in the paint with attitude who's going to be swatting shots. Right? Who's going to be a force in addition to getting the rebounds. You can't have a highly technical rebounder inside who isn't scaring opposing players from coming in the paint. Right? Guys coming in the paint should be looking over their shoulders. Like the guys trying to come in the paint on, let's say, Dikembe or, um, you know, Akeem back in the day, right? So they look soft to me defensively. The guys, you know, will never be confused, never, ever, with the Showtime Lakers, right? They don't know their roles, right? Understand, the Showtime Lakers back in the day had a bunch of scores, but also understand that even with those scores, everyone understood that Magic had the ball, and he was going to decide who got the ball, right? And the guys trusted him enough to understand the ball was going to go around. It wasn't always going to go into Kareem. McAdoo was going to get his touches. Byron Scott was going to get his touches. Coop was going to get his touches. James Worthy was going to get his touches, right? You'll never have that in Cleveland, right? Let's be real. You know, you don't have that distributor in Cleveland. I know LeBron got 11 assists last night. Okay, great. Is he now going to subordinate his game and move from being a mid-20 score to being, what, 15 points a game to facilitate Kyrie Irving? Is that what they expect to have happen in Cleveland? And even if that does happen, does that team have the defense to actually be an elite team? Look, I like, you know, Varejo's attitude. He's a limited player, isn't he? So put me among the skeptics of the Cavaliers. Let me, let me make one other point, too. And I've mentioned this in other videos. You know, LeBron James is a great guy. He's an unselfish basketball player. But let's not confuse that with being a great leader. He's not. Right? You know that just hearing the comments from former teammates right you look at LeBron James and he's not the kind of guy who walks on the court and then everyone defers to him right that's Jordan right that's not LeBron right LeBron has a different kind of charisma right he's not Elijah Wan. you understood when Elijah Wan walked on the court Nobody on his team was going to be slacking defensively. You just understood it. Right? Larry Bird. Right? I'm not saying Bird was the best defender, but you understood. The guys on the team realized there was a program. Right? They weren't going to be out there freelancing. There was a program. There were championship expectations. 
Now with LeBron, I know there's the desire and stuff like that. But Kyrie Irving wants to take his shots. Deion Waiters wants to take his shots. Right? Guys are looking at LeBron and they're thinking, hey, why should I defer to him? I was a scorer in high school. I was a scorer in college. Hell, I was the first player picked in the NBA draft. That's what Kyrie Irving is thinking. Right? This guy wasn't picked any earlier than me. Hey, I just signed a max contract. Now someone's going to tell me, a max player, that I'm supposed to what? drop my points per game and defer to other guys when I think I have my man beat on the court? Well, that's what's going on in Cleveland right now. And I don't care if they win a token game here or a token game there. I don't care if they push Chicago, a better team, into overtime in Chicago, then LeBron takes over and they win that overtime game. If the playoffs started today, my money's not on the Cavs. The Cavs would be a hedge position. Right? I'd be out there looking for, you know, the Chicago Bulls. Quite frankly, I'm more intrigued by the Washington Wizards than I am the Cleveland Cavaliers. Right? Much more intrigued by the Wizards. Right? I've seen great leaders. Shaquille O'Neal. Moses Malone. Right? These are guys who they're on the court and, you know, people understood. You know... LeBron doesn't have that level of gravitas with his teammates. Folks, he's 30 years old. He's not going to get it now, right? Understand, Jordan, as a young man, would refer to teammates as his supporting cast. Now, I know Jordan, a bit of a narcissist, Kobe, a bit of a narcissist. Sometimes narcissism goes with leadership, right? LeBron is much more of a passing and giving teammate than those guys. But understand, the guys around him aren't following his plan. Right? Understand, even if they followed his plan, why do we think for a second that great players necessarily have the recipe on how to run an NBA franchise? Haven't we learned, looking at Jordan, who's growing on the job? That being a great player doesn't necessarily mean you have the blueprint on building a champion, right? Wasn't Magic Johnson head coach for the Lakers for a while? How did that work out, right? So let's not assume because LeBron's playing with some guys he likes or some guys he respects that that's the winning formula. Quite frankly, what they're doing in Golden State is much more breathtaking and high risk. By the way, there's a guy who's a consultant for Golden State. His name's Jerry West. You might recall him because he also helped build the Lakers way back when. He also helped build Showtime. Now, Jerry West happens to have been one of the best players in NBA history. Okay, fine. But apart from Jerry's playing ability, we know Jerry has NBA executive ability. Right? Hard decisions in Golden State, right? Monte Ellis was a fan favorite. He's gone. Andrew Bogut in. Bogut was hurt for a while, right? Golden State's drafting people you never heard of, like Draymond Green, right? They go out, they pick up Andre Igudala, right? It sounds like scotch tape until you see it work. Then you realize, wow, these guys had a plan. What's the plan in Cleveland right now? I hope it's something more than, you know, hang around the Bulls and then LeBron takes over, right? It has to be better than that. Let's just say that I don't see the team identity with the Cavs that I saw with Jordan's Bulls when they won 72 games and you understood that those Bulls were never conceding home court to anyone, not even the home team. And that those Bulls, whatever they did offensively, were going to shut you down defensively. Right? You knew that. That team had an identity. What's the identity with the Cavs? What's the identity going to be? Is there ever going to be a moment with the Cavs where suddenly, as you're watching the Cavs, Kevin Love is a great defensive player. 
right? Anderson Varejo is actually a scoring threat for more than 10 feet. When's that going to happen? Kyrie Irving's actually passing the ball regularly, giving up shots because he sees bigs with better chances at scoring. You think that's going to happen this year? I don't. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me just say, let me just name some teams who I'm more excited about than the Cavaliers this year, right? Sadly for some, many of the elite teams are in the same conference. Golden State, Houston, the Dallas Mavericks, right? Uh, that West is going to be difficult, right? Out East, the Chicago Bulls. I'll tell you what, folks, take a look at the Brooklyn Nets as well, right? The Washington Wizards. All of the teams I've mentioned just have more of a team identity and a strategy than the Cavaliers do right now. I think it's great that LeBron returned home and stuff like that, right? I'm just surprised that anyone expected LeBron to have the level of greatness that he had with the Miami Heat. Understand, just like Tom Brady's numbers exploded when he had a great Hall of Fame wide receiver in Randy Moss, right? That's the same way LeBron's numbers exploded when he was playing with Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade. He's not anymore. If you're expecting those numbers and that level of excellence, brace yourself. You might be disappointed. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.